there, film buffs. Look who it is, Straight Shooter, here for another episode of How I See It. I'm not going to be too long-winded in the intro today because if you've seen some of my other videos, you know what's up. I'm at Team Sound Studios again, thanks to them. As you know, this review will have spoilers. So as you can tell from the title, I'm reviewing Glass today. I was really excited to see this movie. I was a big fan of Unbreakable. It was definitely my favorite earlier Shyamalan film. And then you had Split, which, as we found out towards the end of the movie, was kind of a sequel to Unbreakable, but it really wasn't. It was really setting up this movie. And now we have Glass. And I gotta tell you, it doesn't disappoint. From the beginning, you see David Dunn. He's in his role, they call him the overseer in this movie, and he's still wearing the green hoodie, walking around with his powers, looking for bad people, doing bad things, and he gets in fights with some people. And unfortunately, the police label him as a vigilante, so of course, they're looking for him too. His son is helping him out, talking to him in the mic that he wears, and telling him what he should be doing, where he should be going, all that stuff. And it's kind of like a, a Batman Oracle kind of thing, which is kind of cool. And they even got the same actor that, that played his son in Unbreakable. And he got a lot of the same actors from, actually I think all the same actors from Unbreakable and the same actors from Split. Elijah's mother is still the same actress, even the guy from the comic book store. You know, the guy says, I have to get some chicken in me. He was in the movie. And another really cool thing was M. Night Shyamalan also makes a cameo again. But as we found out, he plays the same character in Unbreakable and in Split. But in this movie, it explains what, how it's the same character. And it's really cool because he says, didn't you used to work at the stadium and all this stuff? And it leads to an ah moment, nice little Easter egg. He finds Horde, uh, Kevin, who is played by James McAvoy. And let me just say off the bat, this movie proves how phenomenal of an actor James McAvoy is. He goes into all the different split personality roles of Kevin Wendell Crumb. And just seamlessly, he'll just go out of one personality and right into another. And sometimes they mesh in different ways. And I can't say enough how impressed by his acting I was in this movie. So finally, he's looking for him. Because as you saw at the end of Split, he saw the news that he kidnapped those girls and killed the girls. And they had the one survivor, Casey, who comes back in this movie. Ever since seeing that news report, he's looking for him. He's like, I have to stop him. And finally, he bumps into him. You know, with his power, he senses what he did. So he, so he follows him. And he finds a new group of girls that Kevin has tied up. Or chained up, rather. And there's a big fight between the two of them. Which leads into the streets. What we think are the police is... The people that work for the psychiatric ward where they end up, they stop them and they bring them to the psychiatric ward. They figured out how to control the horde's personalities with the strobe lights and everything. It was really cool because it was a way for him to show all different kinds of personalities, but it makes sense that they're doing it this way instead of just... I want you to be Patricia, or I want you to be Dennis, or I want you to be this and that. He can't just call Bonnet on, on a command. It's a trigger. So they found the trigger that would help. And it's not explained per se, but it kind of makes sense because split personality is not just in the mind, but it can also sometimes be triggered by audio, visual cues, and stuff like that. Even though it's not explained, it kind of makes sense if you've ever studied psychology or a mental disorder. They're all locked up in the psychiatric ward. David Dunn, played by Bruce Willis, Kevin Wendell Crumb, The Horde, and Elijah Price, Mr. Glass. And once that happens, the movie is a little bit more of a slow burn, but I like it because there's so many awesome scenes. 
the head psychiatric person, she talks to all of them, especially the scenes when she's talking to the Horde. It's just great, great filmmaking because her acting is really good. James McAvoy's acting is really good. And I know that there's been some criticism about how little they used David Dunn in this movie, but I think that's because when he's in his psychiatric ward, the exchanges between him and the main researcher aren't really that engaging, not as much as it is between her and the ward. And then we see Mr. Glass, Elijah Price, who is seems like he's catatonic. He just sits there in his wheelchair and he doesn't say anything. He just makes little facial twitches or whatever. And then finally, there's a scene where an orderly comes and starts talking to him. And out of nowhere, he just makes this one movement. And he has a piece of glass in his hand and he slits the guy's throat. And we find out that he, all along, has been knowing what's going on. Because the whole idea is they're trying to convince them that they're actual normal human beings and they don't have supernatural powers. David's bones aren't unbreakable. It was a fluke on the train. Beast doesn't have supernatural powers. He just feels powerful. Elijah Price doesn't have superhuman intellect. If not for this movie, I might have actually believed that because I thought, oh, he's devious and he's criminally insane because he's a terrorist and he commits all these murders. He thinks just because he meets someone that has unbreakable bones, he thinks that he's super intelligent and knows how to manipulate people. And in Unbreakable, you don't really get that very much, how smart he is, but in this movie, you definitely do. What ends up happening is he and Kevin, the Horde, he talks to him and says, I wanna meet the Beast. He meets the Beast and the Beast says, what's wrong with you, why are you in that wheelchair? And he says, because my bones easily break, all I've known is pain. And right then is when the Beast says, I respect you and I'll follow you and they team up. There's this really cool scene where they get out of the mental ward. Elijah's on a loudspeaker and he talks to David and he's saying, if you want to stop us, you have to get out of your room. It's a metal door, but anyone with normal bones, you know, they would break if they tried to break it down, but not you. And that was the moment when you breathe a sigh of relief that the movie isn't going in the direction that they're not actually superhuman. Because you get you see him breaking down the door, and no normal human could do that. Not even a really strong person. He says, it's time for a showdown. Meet us at this building or whatever. There's a lot going on, which I'll get into in a minute. They get out, and David gets out. And they meet in the courtyard of the psychiatric ward. And there's this big battle between them. And his... David's son is there, Elijah's mother is there, and the girl that the Horde kidnapped that he let go, she's there too. And there's a lot of really good dialogue while this action is happening. And there's this one twist. David's son ends up doing research and finds out about Kevin's parents. Kevin was abused when he was a kid, which is how the DID came about and he created all these personalities because his mother abused him. And we don't really know much about his dad other than he died. But we found out that not only was David on that train, but Kevin's dad was on that train. And in the midst of the battle, David's son talks to him and says, your dad wasn't on just any train. He was on that train that David was on. So in effect, Elijah Price killed your father. So then there's this back and forth between the Horde and Elijah Price. And he's like, I created you. That's what I do. I create superheroes. And the Horde, or the Beast rather, 
says, I thank you for what you did, but I can't trust you to not look out for me anymore. And he breaks some more of his bones and he hits him in the solar plexus, which is pretty much a fatal blow because his bones are so unbreakable, they'll like shatter. And then he continues fighting David. While he's fighting David, there's this water tank that he throws him into. And they get out because David hits the wall because he has unbreakable bones. But what ends up happening is the girl that escaped from the horde situation in Split comes up to him and says, Kevin, calm down. She touches him and they have a connection because at the end of Split, he says to her, you're like me. You felt pain. You've been abused. So you're pure because they have that connection. When she touched him, he calmed down and he stopped being the beast and he became Kevin again. And because he, she also said his name and that's how you bring him out. But and while that was happening, a sniper shot him, and it was a fatal shot as well. And then the reveal is that the people that run the psychiatric ward are actually a secret government agency hell-bent on keeping superheroes out of the light. And you see this one guy that's drowning him, and that's his weakness, water. So the guy pulls his head up, and she goes, we have to keep the balance. We can't have superhuman people among society it would cause chaos people would freak out too much or something like that but i want to know whether i convinced you that you might just be human and he doesn't really answer her but she walks away and says yeah and go ahead and the guy drowns him and he's dead they're all dead glass is dead the horde is dead and david dunn is dead now, if the movie ended right there, I would have been really disappointed because what was the point of all of it, right? But then, then you find out more, and that's where the brilliance comes in. You find out that you, you see a flashback of when Elijah was in the psychiatric ward in his wheelchair. There was supposed to be a lobotomy scene. But he fixed the machine so that it didn't perform the procedure. He took out some mirrors or something. And not only that, but he also, he entered a virus that controlled the cameras. Everything that was happening outside the battle between David and the Beast was being streamed onto a private site. David's son, Casey, and Elijah's mother were sent to the file after everything was done. So they meet up after the whole battle and the tragedy of everything that happened and they uploaded the file to news networks, to wherever they could so that it would get out. And then you see all these news outlets broadcasting what happened and saying superhumans exist. The government agency finds out, and they're all like, wow, we're, we're done now, because it's out. There's nothing we can do to stop it anymore. I mean, maybe we can exterminate more superhumans, but everyone already knows now that they exist. So all along, even though Elijah's a terrorist and... He's a really terrible human being. He still exposed this government agency, which is almost as bad as what he was, because he was just trying to not only create superheroes, but he was also trying to get people to accept the fact that they exist. He was the catalyst for that, for the world knowing that they exist. It was because of his actions that the world is not ignorant anymore. And I think that that was just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I thought Shyamalan wrote this movie very well. I thought there were a lot of twists and turns, which at first you're, you, you think are kind of jarring, but when you see the big picture at the end, I can't say enough good things about this movie. A plus plus. 
if you were a fan of Unbreakable, if you were a fan of Split, well, hopefully you've already seen the movie because you're watching my spoiler review. But how I see it, I thought it was absolutely phenomenal, fantastic. I just thought it was absolutely great. Definitely lived up to my expectations and blew them away at the same time. I'll definitely picking this up when it comes to disc. And I, I really can't say anything bad about this movie. I just loved it. But that's how I see it. But stay tuned. I will see you again. Take care, guys. One, two, three, four!